And we are back on The Rodriguez Show, and we have our final guest for this ep- episode. She performed last month at It's a Summertime Thing. She's here now. Chav! Hello, hello, hello. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. good. Yeah. Good. Uh, thank you so much for doing It's a Summertime Thing last month. Oh, thank you for the invite. I'm yeah. so grateful. I'm grateful yeah. to be here. So oh, yeah, very, very grateful. Thank you. How was that? How was that performance? It was awesome. It was really cool. Very unexpected to get the invite from you guys and from Noah. Yeah. So it was just any opportunity I get to perform, I'm always very grateful for. And yeah, it was a good time. The crowd was cool. Get yeah. to, that's my favorite part is just seeing like the crowd reaction. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, was the nice. crowd was really on your side for that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah really... I kind of have like an outer body experience when I perform. So like I'll just see people standing there yeah. and I'm just like doing my thing. And then I'm like, oh, there's a bunch of people standing here. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I'm glad they enjoyed it. Yeah. And I enjoyed myself too. Nice. Uh, yeah. And that was, uh, so yeah, so the way that those work is both Noah and us book like the artist for it. So how did uh, you and Noah, how did you meet Noah James? I, it's kind of crazy. So uh, like two years ago, my um, friend and I, Alyssa, she's a poet. We go do like these open mics out in Pomona. Mm-hmm. And no one knows the person who runs that named Il Cruz, the Pomona Out Loud open mics. And um, she she was like, oh, yeah, Noah comes sometimes or he used to come. And I'm like, I'm going to meet this man. I'm going to meet him. And then this year he had a competition for the Brick to Your Face competition going to Arizona. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to sign up. And oh, no, no, I met him before that. I lied. I met him at an open mic. and He was a guest artist mm-hmm. and I performed and I just did like a quick nervous high buy situation giving him his flowers mm-hmm. and then I signed up for the competition because my friend Alyssa told me to because I'm barely on Instagram I didn't have Instagram at the time mm-hmm. and then um, I emailed him and out of all the people who submitted to be in the competition he picked me as a contestant nice. and then I was like okay yep I'm gonna do it and I was afraid because just nervous and then I won the competition oh, nice. being more nervous mm-hmm. And then got to go to Arizona with him and stuff like that. So that was like, I consider that my official meet because I got to talk to him a little bit more than at the open mic. So yeah, then ever since he's been like just big brother in me and guiding me and giving me these opportunities like the last show and other things coming up. So yeah. No, same with us, man. Noah James always giving us, like he reached out to us to schedule these shows with him. So he's he's a a great guy. Yeah, he's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) He's really dope. Really dope. For real. (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, so how did you start making music? Um, (laughs) Started when I was 18 back home in Sacramento where I'm from over Mm. a stupid breakup. So I wrote a stupid song. Mm. And that no one's ever going to hear that. It's just (laughs) trash. Um, You got to start somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I uh, started back home. I always felt like I had like just like this urge to rap. And I was honestly inspired by my aunt. Like, she's, like, the coldest freestylist I've ever met. Like, she could just come up off the dome. So, like, she wasn't seeing me paying attention to her and, like, just doing these things, just playing yeah. around. But I was like, man, I could do that one day. And mm-hmm. then I wrote my first song when I was 18. And then I was back in Sacramento. I moved out here when I was about 20. And then something just told me just, like, to write. Like, just this urge to write. So nothing – I write about things that I go through. So mm-hmm. – Nothing in particular was like, oh, like no one in particular, but just something in the back of my head and my heart was like, just write, just write it out. Yeah. And it was since I was 18 till I moved out, I always had like little bits and pieces of songs. And yeah, just kind of manifested from there. So I say around 18, but I know when I was younger, I like felt it in my heart. And yeah. I was like, like you always kind of knew that this is what you were destined yeah, for. Yeah, music is just something that I, I oh, sorry, something <laughs> that I like just like, really loved even just like listening to it so mm-hmm. being able to just like rhyme things and tell a story it was just really cool so yeah, yeah i nice. think i nice. think so i think that's the best answer <laughs> <laughs> did it take a while to get to to find the style that you're doing now oh um, yeah kind of i i definitely base it off like the artists that i listen to um so like i listen to them for a reason just because i could relate to them so who are, who are some like, of those people Favorite artist that I always listen to growing up is Kendrick. Kendrick, Cole, and Wayne. Those are like my top three. My brother used to come home with a new Wayne mixtape every other week <laughs> when I was like in high school. And he, I don't think he knew I was paying attention either. But I was like, man, Wayne is cold. And then <laughs> Kendrick, I discovered him when I was in high school. And I was like obsessed. Same with Cole. And then um, just like Lil Sims, huge fan of Lil Sims. Mm. And different jazz artists too. Um, 
R and B artists, Erica, Lauren, and yeah, so nice. all these people and like what they're doing, I'm kind of like, oh, I like that. I like the sound. I yeah. like what they're talking about, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do that route. Yeah. So even like on the the only project that I have out, it has like different genres of beats wise, mm. but I feel like what I talk about kind of unifies it. Yeah, and then some people like I had. Because my mom's from North Philly, so I went to Philly for a reunion years ago, and they're like, "Oh, you're a conscious rapper," and I'm like, "I don't, I don't really like that term because mm. everyone's got different consciences, so that's their conscious rap." So I'm yeah. like, "I just rap what I go through." So, yeah, yeah I, I think and I, I think there's like a certain sometimes a negative connotation with conscious rapper, like yeah. where it's like you can still turn up to your music. It's not like exactly. it's not, you know, exactly. <laughs> so like, yeah, like I could talk about. I only talk about what I go through, but whatever yeah. I talk about, you know, it is what I want to talk about. <laughs> so, <Exactly>. yeah, <laughs> same with everybody. So, yeah, it kind of took me a while to get comfortable, mm -hmm. to get comfortable with my, my music and stuff like that. Nice. But, yeah. Well, now you seem like you're in a great place in terms of yeah. being comfortable. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Still very nervous, but it's just every every opportunity, even being here, is just, like, shocking. Like, I'm like, I wasn't never going to, was never expecting nothing, nothing that's been happening. So, yeah. Well, I guess it's part of it, right? Part of, like, manifesting the, I, I'm going to be an artist one day. It's like, well, all the other stuff that comes along with it just, just comes along with it, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. My cousin, she was telling me about this book I want to read called Self-Reliance. And this quote, I'm totally going to butcher the quote. But basically saying, like, God wouldn't give his talent to cowards. So, mm. like, like, I can cuss, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was like, it's like basically don't be a bitch. Like you know what you're doing, <laughs> so do it. So don't be scared. So I'm yeah. like, okay, I kind of keep that in the back of my mind. Still got to read the book. So I'm like, yeah. all right, I got it in my heart. Got this talent. So I got to do it. Yeah. However it plays out. So yeah. That that's a good that that resonates with even us. Like when we're doing an event, like like the one you were at, like mm -hmm. setting that up. It's it's always like, oh man, how how this is gonna work? And then you finally do. You're like, yeah, I was meant to do this. That's exactly, why. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you mentioned your brother who gave you the, you know, the one, the music taste kind of like his, he influenced your music taste. Is there anybody else that helped you get along to this point where you are? Um, my aunt, my brother, just him bringing home different things. My dad, ironically, I didn't even think about this until I got older. Like he would, he was a huge Disney fanatic because we were kids. So he wanted us to listen to like the cleanest stuff. But Disney has like some cold jazz and different like intricate like oh, yeah. music things. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so my my mind was always like expanded, not just to hip hop. Like I love rock, I love jazz, some country, but like you know, I'm just like open to different things. So mm -hmm. my dad was a big influence when I was younger. I had a huge emo stage. I was listening to screamo, so oh. I was like, just, I was all over. Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm glad I have that open mind and I'm not closed off to like oh no, yeah. I'm just like this. So yeah, I think it's just growing up and just having like an open mind mm -hmm. of music and an open family to like oh this sounds cool. So. Mm -hmm. I'm, Listen to this. When I was like in middle school, I <laughs> did the, of course, the illegal burner CDs. Of the whole, <laughs> yeah, like wire, like wire, like wire days. <laughs> yeah, of the whole um, MGMT album. And mm. I, we bumped that for like two years. It's just, <laughs> it is so good. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. just re listened to it. Okay, go and stuff yeah. like that. So wow. I think family, yeah. like everyone just being like, oh, this is cool. And not being like, oh, that's weird or anything like that. So yeah. my family plays a really big part. My mom grew up. Playing Barry White all the time, Teddy Pendergrass, <laughs> <Same>. so oldies <laughs> and everything. So yeah, yeah, it, it's it is cool. Yeah, there's there's moments like when you're going to high school where they're like, "This is not kind of music isn't cool." And mm -hmm. then and looking back, I'm like, "Damn, I shouldn't have listened to that because there was so much stuff I could have been listening to back then." And now I'm like rediscovering. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you so you've come a long way in terms of like you know creating this style for yourself or getting comfortable, like you said. And then earlier this year, you dropped Ready. What in, went into the making of that? So the making of Ready has songs that I've written since I was 18. So no. those are all bits and pieces of songs that when I was going through them and I stopped going through them, I stopped writing. So mm -hmm. they kind of like all those things started reoccurring again. Like the song, Get to the Bag. I was broke as a joke. So I'm like, all right, got to finish this song. And then uh, the pre-2020, going through another whatever little relationship thing. All right, that's how I'm feeling. Got to finish this song. So it all accumulated from kind of, it was kind of shocking of things that I wrote years ago, but mm -hmm. I was able to finish when I was going through them again. So it's like, yeah. like I guess, what's the word? Like a full circle situation mm -hmm. or like, oh, I kind of, I don't want to say manifested, but I kind of knew something was coming even mm -hmm. when I was younger. So I was like, I'm just going to do an album. It, it happened. I did my very first open mic. Tell me if I'm speaking too fast. I no, you're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did my first open mic out in LA uh, sometime in 2022. 
and I did Get to the Bag. I originally did that song to a 21 Savage a lot instrumental. Oh, okay. So I didn't even have a beat for that. So mm-hmm. I just did it out there, instrumental, um, a cappella, I mean, and got good, like, oh, okay, everybody rocking with me. It was cool. And then I was like, I'm going to just keep doing my music thing. And then I was like, I'm going to do an album. And I told my mom. I didn't tell her I, like I was doing music or nothing. I was just like, hey, y'all, did my first open mic. And then I sent them the video. They're like, you doing music? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I'm going to do an album. And then uh, I told my best friend, Crystal, too. She was, uh, I was like, I want to do an album. Like, I want to do it. She was like, you should do it. At the beginning of last year, 2022. And um, I did it. And she was like, you just like made the blueprint for yourself. And then you just like execute. So... Yeah, sent that to my family, and then I did the album, didn't tell my dad nothing, and then I sent him, I was like, Dad, I made an album, and he was like, what? album? And, was like, <laughs> and he was like, a music album? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I was nervous, just because like, why well, I moved out here for school and all that stuff, so he already didn't know what I was doing, and yeah. let alone doing music, so, but he ended up loving it, and um, yeah, so just like, things nice. I go through, I write, and yeah, and then I put them all together, Yeah. Got all them beats from almost Beatstar. I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, gotcha, I paid gotcha. for my own studio time. Yeah. And my aunt helped me out, of course, with that. And like yeah. everything else I paid for, was able to like meet people along the way. And So you're yeah. like truly an independent artist. Like you did it all yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, but you got to figure it out somehow. Yeah. You, know? exactly. you got the attention of Noah James. So you're doing something right. You know? exactly. yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's how that came together. And that album... I dropped it February, I want to say 2022, under Chav without an apostrophe. And there's a Latin male artist named Chav without mm. an apostrophe. So when I dropped it, his picture was on everything. My streams are going to him and all that stuff. Mm. So my engineer, David, um, Dave D. Beat Studios, <laughs> he was like, you could just take it off and then put the apostrophe. Like, you're fine. Mm. You don't got like millions of views or anything. I was like, all right. So I took it off and mm. I put it back out this February this oh, year. Oh, that's why. So it actually came out last year. Yeah. So it came out last year. So I just took it down when it was like the year anniversary or whatever. And mm. then I just re-put it back out and changed my name and stuff. So nice. yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's my well, little baby. My <laughs> baby. <laughs> so you said, you talked about how like you had to you know, think back to your mind state at those times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, of course, with like bringing broke something we can all relate to, but like the relationship stuff, like, is mm-hmm. it hard to revisit that when you're performing the songs? No, it's not. It feels liberating. Like, mm-hmm. it feels so good. Like, even the song pre-2020, which is funny because on when I put it on SoundCloud, I put up to 2020, so they're cr- incorrect. I mm-hmm. just, I didn't pay attention when I put them out. But, yeah. um, <laughs> like, I was like, I don't feel this way no more. So that's why it was like pre-2020. After 2020, I stopped feeling that way. Like, I think almost every, hopefully every artist, like every album is like in that moment, in that year, in that lifetime, in that journey, mm-hmm. and you just move on. So I hope like I my albums are growing with me as I'm growing. That's yeah. kind of how I see it. So to relive it, no, I'm like, oh, it's okay. Like yeah. Tribute has a bunch of passings of my family members and certain things like that. So I see it more as like just giving them homage and stuff. So yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely like a beautiful thing that you were able to pay tribute to them in that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, not too yeah. shabby, not too nice. shabby. <laughs> and we're going to hear that song uh, coming up. Um, but, uh, yeah, so one of the other things that's on your Instagram is uh, you are also into dance. How did that happen? I am. So when I moved out here, um, I transferred from my other college in Sacramento to RCC, and I was originally going to do a dermatology major, go to do the nursing program and all that. And then I seen a dance audition, and I was like, I'm going to just do it. And I fell in love with it. Always mm-hmm. loved to dance, but just couldn't afford no private lessons or anything like that. Yeah. So I did it and um, made like a couple little casts on the concert and on the on the show. And I was like, I'm changing my major. And then <laughs> I told my mom. She was like, okay, do whatever you want. Yeah. My dad was like, dance. And he was like, how are you going to make money dance and all that stuff. But Loved it. Got my degree. Got three degrees from there and my Pilates certification. Wow. So, nice. Yeah. So, so yeah. now that you're a Pilates teacher? I am. Full-time Pilates instructor. Uh, my main studio is Positively Pilates out in Redlands and mm. also teach for the Fontana School District at A.B. Miller High School. And I choose fitness gym. And I'm also a colonic hydrotherapist at wow. uh, Inner Glow Wellness in Redlands. So, yeah. Dang. So, yeah. But dance, it's always in the back of my my heart and my head. Just haven't mm. been able to do it as much because I work so much. All I yeah. do is work. Um, but, yeah, it's always there. Whenever I can, I'll go well, dance. Well, based on the story of how you got into it, you just seem like a person that just, like, follows your instinct and your heart. Exactly. <laughs> Same thing with music. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. do whatever, whatever very, very spiritual person God tells me to do. So, yeah. I feel like... 
God guides my spirit. My spirit is like a map to God. So like I'm getting an urge to do something, just go do it. Even if it scares me, especially if it scares me. Something yeah. that's fearful means like, I personally means that you should attack it head on because mm-hmm. it's probably not as scary as you think. Yeah. So yeah, with music, I was like, all right. All right, let's do it. Gonna happen. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> um, so yeah. So what? Right now, you know, you're you you have a product out. Uh, what is, what is your ultimate goal? Do you have like a goal in mind, or like with um, music at least? Music wise, coming up, I'm working on a new album, just like the Ready album. That that one took. I didn't say this. Took a couple years to do. Mm. So not even just from 18, yeah. but like when they I was say like, that you work your whole life for the first one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the same thing with this one. I just don't want to like rush it. I'm gonna take time. It's gonna be very different from Ready. This one's gonna be called Padme. Um, a little bit more vulnerable, even though Ready was pretty vulnerable. It's a little bit more vulnerable. Want to throw in some more like live music, live instruments, and so yeah, very mapping that one out like as like intentional as possible so don't know when that's coming but yeah. that's what i'm working on yeah. and then yeah. as like an overall goal i truly truly would love to like go on like a tour one day and just like just go around and just do my music you know yeah. just yeah not even like not big on like getting famous or anything if you, you guys don't notice like i'm never on instagram like, <laughs> like, I, like I don't have the app i only had it to contact y'all <laughs> so, like, like just just expressing myself and like whoever can relate to it is good but i always write music for myself so yeah. but I, I would love to do a coffee shop tour one day i always tell my boyfriend about that just like yeah. all around yeah. states where people that i know so i'm like yo you know a coffee shop and take some of my friends who are poets yeah. and musicians as well um but yeah other than that that's the main thing so yeah. get this padme album done i got a couple tracks done but nice. it's not where i want it to be yet yeah, you think like maybe next year Possibly. <laughs> we have no clue. Yeah. It, it, well, it seems like, you know, your entire journey is just very organic, just like you said, intentional, just letting things happen. So yeah. that that's cool to, to be able to live, to have that opportunity to make music, like you said, and, and not put pressure on yourself. Just yeah. do it for, for the love of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm very grateful to be in that position, to, yeah. to be have support as well. Everyone's like always uplifting me and no rush or anything or... Yeah, just just like, okay. And it feels like I'm going to get it done. Ready? I was like, all right, I'm going to just buy 10 hours of studio time, and I'm going to knock all these songs out. And you did this it in one. the 10? Yeah. <laughs> I did it in the 10. Yeah. <laughs> so this one, to. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of money. So. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, same, same. Just being intentional, taking my time, and yeah. Well, well, thank you for sharing your story. That's all, that was awesome. Yeah, uh, we're going to hear a couple of your tracks. We're going to perform a couple of tracks for us right now. Before we do that, though, we have a 60-second segment. You ready for this? Yes. All right. 60 <laughs> seconds with Chav right now on headphones? The Rodriguez Show. I'll tell you when the buzz is. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Favorite song right now? Uh, Little Sims Gorilla. Gorilla. Nice. <laughs> uh, favorite cartoon character? Oh, SpongeBob. <laughs> what would you describe you when you were a kid? How would I describe me? Yeah, one word to describe you when you were a kid. Cry baby. <laughs> uh, do you have a hidden talent? They're music. All, uh, music. <laughs> They're all out there. Yeah. Indica sativa or hybrid? Uh, indica. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Netflix, Hulu, or HBO? Hulu, Bob's Burgers all day. <laughs> <laughs> name of your best friend in high school? Best friend in high school. Her name was Linda. Linda Harrell. Yeah. First CD you ever bought? Kendrick Lamar's, not Section 80. When, good Kid. In the, in the, good Kid, Mass City. Yes. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, first song you illegally downloaded or burned? <laughs> uh, in MGMT, that whole album. <laughs> I don't even know the name of the album. <laughs> uh, Jim Carrey or Will Ferrell? Ooh, Jim Carrey. Nice. Yeah. And your favorite thing about music? Uh, it's expression. It's expressive. Yeah. And that was 60 Seconds with Chab on <laughs> The Rodriguez Show. Nice. Performing two songs right now on The Rodriguez Show. This is Chav. Hey, hey, hey. This is Truth and Love featuring Deaf Sound. He did the beat, and he is also the guy saying Truth and Love in the background. Shout out Deaf Sound. Amazing artist. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'ma keep on going though I don't know where I'm going to I'ma keep it pushing and I hope that something come on through Seeking truth, steady doing what my spirit wants to do Fulfilling feelings that's sending and loving heavy gratitude Man who knew, being by myself just watching flowers bloom Ignoring all of your shit cause it's nothing new Really help me stay in my shit, stay kind and stay generous And when I seek some selfish I just think of you So thank you for them too Some people you meet are only there for a season It may take some time for a full circle completion Even if you are mistreated Cause people go off the deep end Now when this encounter you can stronger or you weaken And stoop down to their level Then just last out of the defense It's really your decision Just know that if you weaken They give you the reaction that they want from the beginning No, don't let nobody walk all over you Or take control of you But make a goal in you Don't let them pull out that mold in you It's easier to see But this is how I see If you do what they did to others You are spreading grief is that who you wanna be? Nah. Is that what you want the world to see? Nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'ma keep on going though I don't know where I'm going to I'ma keep it pushing and I hope that something come on through Seeking truth, steady doing what my spirit wants to do Fulfilling feelings, listening and loving heavy gratitude I'ma keep on going though I don't know where I'm going to Keep it pushing and I hope that something come on through Seeking truth, what I wanna do Fulfilling feelings, listening in Yeah, this is on the album Ready by Chav on all platforms, in my Instagram, in my bio, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is tribute. Yeah, yeah, look, lived another day, so by my bed I start to pray, and if you really feel me, you know why I feel this way, done lost so many people that them feelings start to stray, been feeling my transition is slowly upon the way, and please do not be worried, there's no need to be afraid, but deep down I'm a realist, it can happen any day, not saying it's my time, but I know something's gonna change, so if I wake again, that's why I gotta give my praise, I gotta take a break, but these bills can't go unpaid, and I work every day, my body fight through the pain, stress it never fades, but this shit can't stay the same, steady hustling, but just end with chump change, but money ain't my motive, too much damage with that, steady walking around this earth with a target on my back, I just hope that I could grow, but know I'm young and I'm black, so even if I have it all, then I would never relax, it's just a piece of paper, and that shit come with danger, and once you get it, then it's gone, there's nothing you can save it, and just remember, the most miserable got all the paper, and if you don't believe me, why well, I got them sanctions, but I won't get into political, they only speak subliminals, and care about materials, and focus on residuals, I'm focused on my spiritual, that's all I control, cause once you get it, when you gone, you gotta let it go, I'm not a Debbie Downer, I'm just speaking my facts, I wanna be a legend like a girl Malcolm X, so if I make mistakes, then I'ma fail the whole class, but nah, failure's not an option, it's a lesson at best, yes, it's a lesson at best, I said failure's not an option, it's a lesson at best, yes, yeah, so, I hope I make enough to get us out of section 8 I hope I make enough to get my mom some real estate She don't need nothing much just a porch and a nice gate So her grand could cause my mother when they wanna go and play I probably don't got it all cause I would give it away I'm so selfless I don't treat myself to any new things Just worried about my people is what I constantly think It seemed like the most evil are ones with all the money But I don't see no evil I just see a lost soul I see someone broken And they still insecure And so they spread their pain Because they ain't here at all And yeah that pain is hatred Because that is all they know But I won't put up with your shit because I'm not within me And I will cuss you out and pray for you in the same sentence And I will take some time to seek some understanding But what you're not gonna do is bluntly disrespect me I ain't no pacifist, I practice it and take the time to master it And really take the time to sit to make sure I don't smack her Can't call no one the bitch cause people think it's only chicks Then they go home and simp and after they ain't start no shit Some people really got that mindset sometimes Instead of healing, be so quick to just victimize And think that everything they say is really alright Sometimes the oldest people can't deal with their own lives 
But is it really worth it? Man, is it really worth it to really live a lie? It puts your life is perfect just so that you could run your fingers across a keyboard surface, displaying to a world that really has no fucking purpose. Well, it ain't my life, so I cannot change it. I just really hope you grow and you start to make sense of the shit you do wrong, cause it is offensive. But hey, you hella grown, probably stuck in that shit. And yeah, I know I'm 24, there's a lot that I don't know. I'll be kind and I'll be gentle, cause the shit that's going on. The more that I read on, the more power I become. And I know where I am going, cause I'm learning where I'm from. I know that change is fate, but this family can't replace. I hope we don't come together, cause someone's at heaven's gate. So, that's why I say. Lived another day, so by my bed I start to pray And if you really feel me, you know why I feel this way Done lost so many people that them feelings start to stray Been feeling my transition is slowly upon the way And if you do not mind, I'm just gonna take the time to say Some names of some people who have touched me in some way I know it's just a shell and they so always remain They got me all through life and will always protect me I feel upon their arms when they wrapping around me Especially when I'm down or when I'm worried or afraid Or when I'm dancing on the stage or even when I meditate Yeah, they souls are eternal and will always remain R.I.P. to Coach Gary R.I.P. Miss Teresa, R.I.P. Uncle Arthur, we won't close, but mama miss you. R.I.P. Grandma Sharon, R.I.P. Grandma May, R.I.P. My grandpa, your gin shot on the way. R.I.P. I'm Renee Hugh, but I'ma see you again. Cause your sons look just like you, so I know you got in them. I had to grab a can, and it looks had to extend. Time keeps on going, they get snatched by the hand. So R.I.P. Glizzy, your cousin Kimmy. My heart is with you. I can't imagine just the way you feeling. I wish I was with you. And Leilani, I'm crying, I'm sorry, entire week I'm so glad that I heard you before we ain't speak Aunt Cleo, you live to see a hundred and four It's so crazy, I won't hear your voice no more Papa T, I'm so sorry for your son's tragedy Sending condolences to you and your team Kaka, your dad gon' be with you every day You gon' understand more as you age And if you heard part one, you know what I'ma say You know we do it big for my cousin who passed away You know how it go, family shout and help me say R.I.P. our angel, long the baby AJ So no, I'm not afraid, that ain't even have to tame They the hardest ones I know when they up on another plane They tell me when I'm wrong and tell me I'ma be okay And I see them in my dreams when I call upon my name Tribute, yeah My tribute, yeah Yeah, yeah and to my loved ones, you should know, this is not a harmful note. I'm someone who has gained faith and is not afraid to go. I said, I said, to my loved ones, you should know, this is not a harmful note. I'm someone who has gained faith and is not afraid to go. Tribute. This is my tribute. Yeah. Also on ready. <laughs> Trev on the Rodriguez show. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, they can follow you on Instagram at Chav. That's C H A V underscore nine one six. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, thanks again. Thank uh, you. And uh, we'll definitely have you at another event performing. That was that was so great. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be back. Thank hey. you all for holding space for me and all the other artists, and we appreciate you. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And that's <laughs> it for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in. Keep it funky. Keep it fresh. Keep it and we out. <laughs>